Hi there. This is the second of two special topic videos looking at minimum wages in the labour market. And in the second one, we're going to be looking at some of the evaluation arguments surrounding the minimum wage debate. The starting point is that there are many, many jobs in the UK economy and in other countries as well, which are extremely low paid. This is gross weekly pay for full time work, uh, medium pay for various occupations. Uh, all of these jobs offer a gross weekly pay of less than £300 per week. Of course, the minimum wage has been in place in the UK for many years now, and there's been an increase in the minimum wage to £7.20 on the 1st of April 2016. So this is a very topical issue, lots of economic arguments you can bring to the, to, to the debate, both for and against. There's also a huge debate at the moment in America uh, about setting federal minimum wages uh, state by state. There's a big debate in the uh, in California about whether to have a $15 minimum wage. Here's an article from The Guardian finding that one in six cleaners and childcare helpers are paid below the minimum wage. Uh, the UK, of course, we're starting to see some of the impact of the higher minimum wage, which Osborne has rebranded as the new national living wage. It's not a national living wage, by the way, it's a minimum wage. Uh, here's, a, here's a restaurant chain, a well-known chain, ZZ, um, according to the FT, cutting some of their perks, cutting some of their in-work benefits to staff. Uh, will you shop there anymore? Who knows? Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour leader, uh, making the case here in The Independent for a European-wide minimum wage uh, tied to the cost of living in each member state to create a level playing field. He's arguing, I think, uh, for something like a £10 minimum wage per hour in the UK. In the United States, Target, huge retail company, has increased their minimum wage to $10 an hour, partly because Walmart has also been raising its minimum pay rates. And there's also There seems to be a little bit of a competition there between the big retailers to, pay, to raise their pay floors. And uh, Eat, another chain in the UK, uh, this was taken from the, the Daily Mail, so it, it must be right. Uh, claims here that the food chain Eat is, uh, again, trying to offset minimum wage by not paying staff for their 30-minute lunch break. Now, you have to be careful, obviously, what you read in the media, but there's obviously a very topical issue at stake here about whether or not the minimum wage should be higher than it is at the moment. Most political parties believe there should be a minimum wage. Uh, it's probably the only the, the most ardent uber free market economists believe that they shouldn't so what are the case what's the case for a higher minimum wage in the uk i'll build the case first in favor and then we'll look at some of the counter arguments well one of the key arguments is simple fairness that uh, in the 21st century in 2016 people who are working in often mundane but important jobs uh, should have uh, a fair hourly pay for the job they do uh, the argument is basically one of equity, that every job should be given fair pay, consistent with the skills, the experience, the attitudes of an employee. A minimum wage, secondly, is also an anti-poverty uh, strategy. It targets the, the take-home pay, the gross income, first of all, and then the disposable income of lower-paid workers. Uh, something like 1.5 to 1.8 million workers received a pay rise in April 2016, it's a lift to their disposable income. Keynesians, of course, would then argue that these people have a high propensity to spend, so that can provide a significant uplift to consumer spending. A third argument is that if you have to pay a minimum wage, if you have to pay a higher pay floor, it actually encourages businesses to think more seriously about their training, about their mentoring, about their management, and uh, there could be some sort of productivity effect. Some economists talk about efficiency wages where if you pay workers more per hour, actually over time, efficiency and productivity goes up. That's partly psychological. People have a better morale if they're paid more. But also firms are given a greater incentive to, to really train their workers well and achieve an increased marginal revenue product. Fourth point is that it should, in theory, help incentives in the labour market, partly because you're creating a, a more of a wedge between pay, payment and income in work compared to payment out of work. Keep in mind, of course, that the government has brought in a welfare cap in recent times, and that cap is, is likely to be gradually reduced year by year. So you could improve incentives for people to take a job rather than stay on welfare. And it can be quite an effective anti-discrimination policy. We know that there's plenty of discrimination in the labour market. 
uh, on grounds of age, on grounds of gender, on grounds of ethnicity. And a minimum wage at least provides a floor in the legal labour market. There will always be cases of businesses that don't pay the minimum wage. But of course, they can be, if it's identified, they can be fined, taken to court, named and shamed. So these, uh, these are the arguments I think that really support the idea of having a minimum wage on grounds of equity and efficiency, largely. This chart, just by the way, before we look at the disadvantages, this chart is quite interesting. It looks at uh, minimum wages in each country. And if you assume that the relative poverty line is 50% of median household income, this chart shows how many hours a week you have to work at the minimum wage in a country <clears throat> to move out of relative poverty. In the UK, you probably have to work a minimum of 26 hours a week at a minimum wage of £7.20. In countries like Greece and the Czech Republic, Oh, well, in particular in the Czech Republic, you have to work over 70 hours a week at the minimum wage to move above the, the sort of poverty line of 50% of median income. Um, that's quite significant and that, that raises an important point that minimum wage is largely designed to reduce the number of hours it takes people to lift themselves out of relative poverty. Because it's about lifestyles, it's about welfare, it's about quality of life. There are, of course, plenty of counter arguments against a higher minimum wage. Some people argue that minimum wage will cost jobs. It increases the marginal cost of employing people. And in theory, of course, a minimum wage can cause higher unemployment. Uh, here's the diagram. I'll come back to the main point in a second. We haven't left it. So here's the minimum wage diagram on the right hand side. If you set a minimum wage above the free market wage W1, then you can create a gap E2 to E3. Labour supply is higher, labour demand is lower, and you create an excess supply of labour. In other words, unemployment. So there is a fear, of course, that minimum wage would cause unemployment. Uh, some people focus on small businesses in particular and say that the, the impact of a minimum wage is disproportionate on businesses that uh, essentially don't make much money. They might make a profit of a few thousand pounds a year, and uh, a higher minimum wage is clearly going to add to their wage bill and might risk the closure of small businesses particularly retailers. Uh, you can argue that actually there are better ways of incentivizing training than the minimum wage. It could be the case that you might use the tax system to promote internships, apprenticeships, in-place training. The minimum wage is not necessarily the best way to improve productivity. If you take a global view, would, would a higher minimum wage in the UK make some businesses less competitive in some global markets because their unit labor costs are going up? Textiles, for example, would it make our hotels less competitive? What are the consequences for our food industry, for example, our farming industry? Does that lead to a fall in competitiveness and perhaps therefore knock on effects on, on the trade balance? And of course, uh, higher minimum wages increase costs. They lift labour costs and that could cause some cost push inflation, uh, which has a negative effect on people's real incomes. So a bit of fear you take these uh, points together, is that the minimum wage could damage jobs, competitiveness and cause inflation. There's our diagram, just in case you've forgotten about it. Now, let me take the uh, evaluation further in two ways. Strong evaluation in exam answers always thinks about alternatives. So here's a question about the minimum wage. Should we have a higher minimum wage? Should we have a living wage, for example? Good evaluation, strong evaluation, focuses on some alternatives. Well, a lot of firms, ignoring Osborne's rebranding, a lot of firms have already signed up to the usual living wage uh, put forward by the Living Wage Foundation. So then that's significantly higher, by the way, than £7.20. You can make a case for saying that actually a minimum wage is good at promoting work incentives, but might income tax or benefit forms be better, be more effective, perhaps cutting the basic rate of income tax, or increasing the tax-free allowance from <clears throat> 11,000 to, let's say, 12,000 pounds, 13,000 pounds. Would, would, would linking welfare to participation on in training programmes be more effective? I mean, what you can do in part of your balanced evaluation is to think about an alternative which might, in theory, be a little bit more effective. And ultimately, um, measures to raise productivity, there might be other ways. Capital investment, for example, more better better management, um, more competition in markets, 
I mean, many, many factors affect productivity, not just the wage that you pay people. And the second uh, deeper evaluation point I'd like you to think about is, is that classic phrase in exams, it depends on. So the impact of a minimum wage on jobs, inflation, real incomes, competitiveness, uh, depends upon. Once you start using that phrase, then you're opening the door to some pretty good evaluation comments and hopefully some great evaluation marks. So for example, the effect of minimum wage depends upon the price elasticity of demand of the goods and services that the affected employers are selling. So a hotel, for example, their demand for their rooms might be fairly inelastic, so they could possibly pass on higher labour costs in the form of an increased room rate. On the other hand, it might not be the case. Companies like Premier Inn and Travel Lodge, for example, might, uh, might decide that no, actually, you know, they, they can't raise their price because the demand's pretty price elastic. Second point, it depends on the state of the economy, bring the economic cycle into it. So maybe lifting the minimum wage and when the economy is doing well seems to be okay because businesses are profitable and employment's rising. Uh, but uh, does that mean that a minimum wage might nudge, nudge lower in a recession um, when firms are not making as much money? The key point is number three, I think. The effect of minimum wage really does depend on what happens to productivity. If you're paying workers more per hour, does that lift psychologically or through better training, better management, does that lift their productivity? Because if the productivity goes up by 3% and the wage has gone up by 3%, the unit cost has stayed the same. And the final point, of course, magnitude and time scale are all favourites. The impact of minimum wage depends upon the magnitude of the change in the minimum wage. So from £7.20, that's quite a big lift this year, and the time scale over which it happens. So the government is hoping over the next five years to gradually increase the minimum wage. And who knows where the British economy will be in, in five years' time. We could already be in recession. We could have been out of a recession and back on recovery again. Lots of uncertainty there. This is a kind of topic, I think, do you agree that there's so much evaluation, so many arguments on both sides. I hope I've tried to prov provide a, a relatively balanced assessment of the arguments. My own personal view, for what it's worth, I'm strongly in favour of the minimum wage. In 2016, we should be paying people fairly for the work they do. But as an economist, you've got to be thinking about both sides of the argument and the evidence and the alternatives. If you do that and have good analysis, you won't go far wrong. Thanks for joining me and uh, see you again sometime soon.